everyone. Today is Wednesday, April the 1st. Yes, it's April Fool's Day. Unfortunately, none of this is a joke. I was hoping I would come in today and someone would say this has all been a drill, but unfortunately that did not happen. So I am Dr. Val Arcos, Chair of the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners, and I'm here with my fellow commissioners, Commissioner Ken Lawrence, our Vice Chair, and Commissioner Joe Gale along with Dr. Al Wong, Director of our Regional EMS System, and Dr. Brenda Weiss, Administrator for our Office of Public Health. Since our briefing yesterday of March 31st, we have had 31 new positive cases of COVID-19 in Montgomery County, bringing our total to 595. These positive individuals are from 19 municipalities, two of which are reporting their first cases Rock, Rockledge Borough has one case, and Upper Salford Township has one case. This moves us to 53 of our 62 municipalities that are home to individuals with COVID-19. The individuals today range in age from 10 years old to 94 years old. And as always, you can check our county map at macopa.org slash COVID-19, and that map is probably being updated as I speak with the new numbers. The age brackets of the individuals today are two people between the ages of 10 and 19, seven between the ages of 20 and 29, four people between the ages of 30 and 39, five people between the ages of 40 and 49, six people between 50 and 59, two between 60 and 69, four between 80 and 89, and one between 90 and 99. We have 15 females and 16 males. Eight individuals are hospitalized, seven are at home in isolation, and 16 are unknown at this time. I'm also saddened to confirm that two more Montgomery County residents have lost their lives to COVID-19, which brings our Montgomery County total to 10. The first individual was an 86-year-old female from Plymouth Township. The second was an 83-year-old male who resided in Rockledge Borough and passed away at home. Again, as always, we extend our condolences to those individuals, their families, their loved ones, and their friends. I want to give just a quick update on the Montgomery County Correctional Facility. Yesterday, we noted that we were awaiting test results for one inmate at our correctional facility. I am happy to tell you that this individual has tested negative for the coronavirus but does remain in quarantine for a full 14-day period. No inmates have tested positive for COVID-19 at the Montgomery County Correctional Facility. Our community-based testing site remains open, up and running well. Again, thank you to Temple Ambler, the Temple University Police, Upper Dublin Township, the Pennsylvania National Guard Medical Unit, and our numerous county departments that are assisting with this effort. As of this morning, before the testing site opened, we have tested 2,636 individuals. We have 55% of those tests back, and we continue to run about 13% of those tests are positive. Now, for those of you who've been paying close attention, yesterday I said we had 62% of those results back, so let me explain that. We only get the test results back for people who live in Montgomery County. And this site has been open to anyone in our region who met our testing criteria. So if an individual from Philadelphia, or from Bucks, or from Delco, or Chester, or Berks made use of our testing facility, we do not get those testing results back here at Montgomery County. There is no simple way to get the data back from everyone that we tested at our testing site. So at least for now, we can assure you that we will not get to 100%, the ability to report 100% of these tests, but we are getting all the individuals who reside in Montgomery County. The site will be open tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Registration for tomorrow will open tomorrow morning, starting at 8 a.m. 
You can make a reservation online at moncopa.org slash COVID-19. Or if you don't have good internet access or an email address, you may make an appointment by calling 610-631-3000. And again, that will begin at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning for appointments tomorrow. Now, I'm going to deviate from this topic for a minute because today is Census Day. April 1st is the official National Census Day. I hope everyone's paying attention. The most important thing that you can do today is stay at home. And while you're at home, you can complete your census form if you haven't done it already. The numbers that we uh, count today during this 2020 census will impact the funding that Montgomery County receives from a number of federal and state sources for the next decade. This will be money for healthcare services, for the SNAP program, for housing, for infrastructure, for analysis of businesses and where businesses come and want to relocate and open. The, the number of things that this data is used for cannot be overstated. We have calculated that if only 5% of Montgomery County households do not complete their census forms, this county stands to lose $72 million a year for the next decade. That's $72 million a year, each year, for the next decade. And that's if only 5% of our households don't complete the census form. 10 years ago, in 2010, the last time we had a census, only about 75, a little over 75% of Montgomery County households completed their census forms. So think how many more resources we could have right now if everybody had participated. And I can't think of a better reason for you to participate than the resources that we are going to need on the other side of this pandemic to help support our local businesses, to help people get back on their feet, to help our <coughs> renters and our homeowners meet their obligations to keep their homes. And of course, the ongoing food insecurity that we see in our county before this pandemic, that we have now and we will continue to have after this pandemic. So please, if you haven't done it yet, this is a great time to do it. Hopefully you're at home bored. It takes about 10, 15 minutes max, depending upon how many people are in your household to complete the census. It does not ask for your social security number or how much money you make, or any banking information, or whether or not you live in this country with legal status. It's just a few demographic questions, um, ages, things like that of the people in your household. It's really quick and simple. If English online is not your first choice of languages, you can call, and there are, I think, a dozen languages available online that you can talk to someone and complete the census in a language that you are most comfortable with. So please, complete your census today on National Census Day. And with that, I'm going to turn over to Commissioner Lawrence. Good afternoon. Today I'm going to share some virtual mental health awareness resources. Uh, the state of Pennsylvania has provided new guidance for behavioral health providers to support alternate ways for individuals to seek mental health services through telehealth. Please make sure you contact your provider to find out how to access these services. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, SAMHSA, is providing regular updates on their new consolidated COVID-19 page at www.samhsa.gov slash coronavirus. And that's www.sam hsa.gov slash coronavirus. They are providing a lot of um, helpful resources such as virtual recovery resources and a disaster distress helpline. The Southeast Mental Health Technology Transfer Center is inviting everyone to a special webinar event entitled COVID-19 Mental Health Challenges and Resilience this Friday, April 3rd at 10 a.m. You can register at www.mhttcnetwork 
That's www.mhttcnetwork.org in the training and events calendar. And the PA Parent and Family Alliance has been working hard to provide useful resources for families and providers across the state. We know that everyone is cooped up at home. Um, these resources include education, mental health, wellness, work, necessary services, art, relaxation, and much more. So after you fill out your census form, you should uh, visit their website at www.paparentandfamilyalliance.org. And that's www.paparentandfamilyalliance.org. And you can search for the Home Together resources. And another great site is Kids Peace, which is giving hope and help to healing to children um, with a helpful link detailing helpful tips, to tips for kids and teens dealing with stress during this crisis. And you can find this article and other helpful articles at www.kidspeace.org. www.kidspeace.org. And as always, if you're experiencing a mental health emergency, please call our mobile crisis line at 855-634-4673. And we'll have all this information on our COVID Hub website. And with that, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Joe Gale. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Montgomery County Commissioner Joe Gale. President Trump has declared a, mass, a major disaster in Pennsylvania and ordered federal assistance to supplement state and local recovery efforts in the areas affected by COVID-19. As Montgomery County is the first county in Pennsylvania to officially confirm a case of the coronavirus, and the county with the second most confirmed cases after Philadelphia, federal assistance will directly benefit the residents of Montgomery County. FEMA will also provide additional resources to Pennsylvania to help counties, municipalities, and individuals adversely impacted medically and economically during the coronavirus outbreak. This major disaster declaration will provide the same emergency protective measures available under the nationwide emergency proclamation. The following individual assistant programs will receive federal funding. Disaster unemployment assistance, crisis counseling, community disaster loans, Disaster Supplemental Nutrition Program, and Statewide Hazard Mitigation. I would like to personally thank both President Trump for his assistance from the national level and Governor Wolf for his support from the state level. We are all working together to keep our citizens and families safe during this challenging time. Thank you very much, and I will turn it back to Dr. Arthur. Thank you. I just want to go over something that's caused a lot of questions recently, which is the discrepancy between our numbers of cases and the state's numbers of cases. And it got particularly big today. And so let me just tell you what we have learned on that. So first of all, the state cuts off their counting at midnight. So in this case, about 13 and a half hours ago, 14 hours ago, is when the state, whatever they have up until midnight, that's when they cut off their reporting. We report everything we have until noon. So we have, what I gave you today is what we have at the county up until noon today. So for instance, I believe that the state had uh, us with still eight uh, individuals that have lost their life to this disease. We have it at 10 because we got those reports this morning. However, right now the, the state is showing about 50 more cases in this county than what we have here. So we dug into that a little bit today, and I want to help explain some of the discrepancy. Uh, first of all, when cases are loaded into the database, nobody at the state is double checking the address. So if a resident of Bucks County uh, is admitted and tests positive in a facility in Montgomery County, sometimes that gets entered in as a case in Montgomery County gets reported to us when we confirm the address of that person and we find out they actually reside in Bucks County, we remove that person from our Montgomery County list. So that reassignment of jurisdiction 
is accounts for the bulk of the cases of the, or the bulk of that discrepancy. The other thing that we do here at the county is we deduplicate the list. So it is not unusual, and particularly since the case numbers have risen, that there are duplicate cases on the list that we get from the state. So we deduplicate, again, the state, we are told, may not be doing that. And then, of course, there are sometimes some data entry errors, maybe an error in an address or that type of thing. Uh, that we ultimately end up confirming once we actually speak to the individual and confirm their actual address. And then the final area where, this, where there can be discrepancies is that particularly since the commercial labs started doing testing, we do get information directly from them, so does the state, and it's possible that the state is getting labs back that haven't made it to us yet. Everything ultimately does get loaded into the Pennsylvania National Electronic Disease Surveillance System, and that's known as PA NEDS, the National Electronic Disease Surveillance System. Sometimes that is lagging a little bit, particularly from these results from some of these commercial labs, but that is where we get our numbers. So for all of these reasons, um, that's why we're seeing some discrepancies. But we believe that the bulk of them are from this reassignment of jurisdiction. And that our numbers are very, what we report to you are accurate in that we're certain these are individuals who live in Montgomery County and have tested positive and we've deduplicated the list. It's possible that there have been some other reports the state has received that haven't quite filtered down to us yet. But our number's pretty, probably the, um, as close to accurate as it can be within maybe just a handful of cases. So hopefully that helps clear up that discrepancy, which today jumped to be fairly big. All right, and with that, I will take questions. Uh, yesterday you brought up uh, Exelon and the Limerick uh, generating station. Uh, wondering if there's an update on that, if you have any more to share on that. So yesterday I mentioned that the Limerick Generating Station is in the midst of a planned outage to do some maintenance refueling uh, at that site. Uh, we were in communication with Exelon before that refueling started, particularly around their pandemic uh, site response plan, or the pandemic response site plan which we did not feel was adequate, and we asked them to postpone that refueling. That refueling has proceeded, and additionally yesterday we received notice that the social distancing measures that they had committed to in that pandemic response site plan were perhaps not being adhered to. So we did have a call this morning, and during that call we reviewed the goals of the relationship between the county and Exelon going forward, I articulated the following four goals. Our first goal is to protect the residents of Montgomery County, and by the way, the uh, chair of the Chester County Board of Commissioners, Marion Moskowitz, and the uh, director of their public safety department, Michael Murphy, was on the call with myself, our director of public safety, Mr. Tom Sullivan, and Dr. Al Wong, who runs our regional EMS response. So we articulated our goals, which are protecting the residents of Montgomery County and Chester County from further spread of COVID-19. As we have point, been pointing out to Exelon for a couple of weeks, this is an area of community spread and the virus could be anywhere. So number one goal is to pre prevent further spread in our community. Number two is to protect our already stretched first responders from further spread of COVID-19. Number three, to protect the regular workforce at the Limerick Generating Station from further spread of COVID-19. These are people who live and work in our communities and who are doing very vital work at the Limerick Generating Station. And four, to protect the contracted workforce, which numbers somewhere between 1,400 and 1,800, I'm not sure of the exact number, brought in for the maintenance shutdown from further spread of COVID-19. The individuals on the phone from Exelon agreed to provide data to us on a daily basis that will support the furtherance of these goals. 
So when you say 1,400 to 1,800 brought in, are these people who are actually staying in Montgomery County or, or are we they all received, from outside or are some from here? We have received a partial list. They are staying in, the list that we had had people staying in Montgomery, Chester, and Brooks County, but I don't have any more detail than that, so you'll have to ask Axel on that question. Here's a question from CBS3. Um, can county health officials isolate how many COVID cases there may be at Norristown State Hospital? And if, if so, how many cases are reported there? Uh, the Norristown State Hospital is under the state's jurisdiction. So we, we would get uh, the name of individuals if uh, they were positive on our county case list, but I don't know what that number is or if there are any. And that question really needs to go to the Pennsylvania Department of Health. Uh, the state hospital is a state entity and not under our jurisdiction here in the county. That's it. We're seeing a lot of numbers out of Philadelphia, police officers, firefighters, EMTs testing positive. Do you have that data in the county? And if so, for county first responders, if so, can you let us know how many of our first responders have been exposed and are testing positive? I don't have that data, but what I can tell you is that all needs are being met at this point. I'm not aware that any unit is down uh, in any sort of substantial way. And as we talked about before, we do have mutual aid agreements across the county. We have a very, very collaborative group of first responders who work together well. And uh, it is my understanding that all needs are being met. Can you say that the Exelon workers are staying in Montgomery County, Chester County, Berks County, these are all hotels? The list that I was given included not uh, with specific designations, but that a number of people are staying in Airbnbs, private homes, campsites, and hotels, and other rental units, I think it said. What's the plan if they fall ill when they're at a campsite? You need to talk to Exelon about that. What, what is your concern? I mean, what, what do you personally feel hearing about Limerick still going on with this plan, this power plant? I have an enormous amount of concern. As we pointed out to them from the beginning, they were coming into an area of community spread here in Montgomery County. They were bringing in people from all over the United States. I still do not know from which states they have come. Uh, they have told me they will get us that information. I have not seen it as of yet. And that uh, it puts at risk the people in our community, the workforce that are in Limerick every day, our critical workforce that keep that very important plant running. The Limerick Generating Station is a critical supplier of carbon-free energy for our region, and that work is vital, in my opinion. So it puts all those people at risk. It puts all the workers that are going in to do this refuel at risk, uh, many of whom are union members from southeastern Pennsylvania, and I don't know if they were properly informed about the situation that they were walking into, that they could be exposed to people from around the country, as well as people from Montgomery County, which we have, as we all know, community spread in our region. So in a moment when we were asking people to stay at home, uh, we have a lot of people who are not staying at home. And the whole point of staying at home is to ensure that our first responders and our hospitals are not overwhelmed with cases. We know that we are going to have cases. We're going to have more cases than we have right now. And the whole point of asking them to postpone was to have them come back at a time when we had a lower disease burden here in the county. Exelon's response, they say that this had to be done now. Have you, is, is that something you're aware of? If the timing of this uh, refueling project was urgent, if it could have been delayed, do you, do you know? So I did do some uh, research separate from Exelon and reached out to PJM Interconnection, which is the entity that runs the grid here. And they did confirm that in a situation like this, if a refuel doesn't happen, that what happens is the generator eventually powers down and is the equivalent of, can be turned off. There's no risk to the public. There's no risk of a meltdown or anything like that. And they felt that under um, this circumstance, that if one of those generators was down, that it would be unlikely to provide a significant risk to the grid over these next several months. Now, there was one caveat to that, which is that there are a number of 
generators that are kind of lined up to be refueled over the next several months. And if every single one of them was not refueled, that that could then potentially cumulatively have an impact. But if one or two were down, that that wouldn't be a problem. So we urged them to postpone this, to come back later in a couple of months, end of the summer, beginning of the fall, when hopefully we are on the other side of this, and that they could take more proactive measures to protect our community. For instance, um, they could bring the workers that are coming in and put them in, sequester them for 14 days before they start any work on the site, keep them sequestered during the entire outage period, and then keep them sequestered for 14 days once the work is done so that those folks don't go and contaminate their own homes or the next place, you know, sometimes I know they do go from site to site to site for these refuels, but they don't then carry the disease somewhere else. You say you don't know where these people are from. Do you know if there's anybody from North Jersey, New York City, Washington? I have to ask, ask Salon those questions. I don't have that information. But if one of those workers here tested positive and they're in dress, I mean, would that come to the Montgomery County Health Department if they're staying in a Berks County Hotel, or would it go back? It would go back to their home state. You remember we had somebody from another state here early on that I announced. So we did get notification of that one, but now that the cases are so much more, um, so many more, it's not guaranteed that we would get that. So we have asked Axelon for that, that if they get notice of any positive cases, regardless of where that person lives, that we are given that information. Have they given you that information yet? They've given that us information about one person. Testing positive? Yes. So one of their people they brought here tested positive? It is not clear to me if that was a person that is lives here and was already a full-time person at Limerick or was brought in. I'm not certain of that. But one of their employees, when they were doing this review, And I can't speak to whether or not it was a contract employee or one of their employees. Again, Someone affiliated with this project or the plant, right. I literally don't, I can't answer your question. So you need to take that to Exelon. And just, just so we're clear, so the folks that they have bought in for the project are just everywhere. They're not even in one hotel or one block. They're just everywhere. That is correct. Concerning? I believe I already stated that I was very deeply concerned about that. The testing site, uh, there was a question Monday of whether or not it would be resupplied. Is there any more clear, uh, clarification Yes, yeah, so the question was about the community-based testing site. Uh, we have gotten some additional supplies. We believe we have enough supplies to at least be open through the weekend and hopefully the beginning of next week. Uh, but we're continuing to take this on a day-by-day -day basis to be sure. And we will be open tomorrow. Anything else, Teresa? No. Okay. Okay, great. We will see you all tomorrow at 3. Thank you.